Hi everyone, this is Shane. Uh, I usually have my daughter Jai with me and my son Nicholas. Uh, we usually do HTML learning videos together. Today I decided to do a different video, um, something more related to kind of what I've been doing at work. So I'm going to do JAXRS as the specification for REST. Um, we're going to set up the uh, Jersey version, which is Sun's version of REST, using Spring Boot. So the basic idea of this video is just to show someone how to set up a base project using Spring Boot. Uh, Spring Boot is just a, a real simple, quick way to get a service up and going uh, with production quality. Uh, it has a, it's a, a new way of setting up uh, microservices. Um, it allows you to, to basically include a lot of different frameworks that use Spring and pretty much does a lot of auto configuration for you. So it's very simple to use. And you can easily, you know, run Tomcat or other server engines embedded inside of it. So uh, it, it's a great framework. So this video will go over setting up um, the project, the base project, and we'll make sure Tomcat runs correctly. Uh, and then we'll have a second video where we actually go and set up uh, and configure the REST endpoint uh, using the uh, Jersey library that will be included in this base project. And then we may have a final video uh, going over how to set up Swagger. Swagger is a great documentation tool for um, REST services. So hopefully there will be three videos um, uh, back to back in this series. So uh, let's get started. So I'm going to first show you there's, there's several ways you can create a Spring Boot project. You can do it from scratch. You can use uh, Spring Initializer. So if you go to um, start.spring.io, there's the Spring Initializer uh, website. And here you can actually go and generate a Maven or a Gradle project uh, that has Spring Boot uh, configured, everything configured for you. So very neat uh, website, very helpful. Um, if you switch to full version here, you can actually see where you fill out all of your uh, POM information to represent your uh, Maven project. Um, if you go down to the bottom, you can see all of the possible libraries um, that by default can be configured with Spring Boot. Uh, I believe there are a lot of other libraries out there that aren't part of this site you can include too, but here are the main ones that, that Spring uh, promotes with the Spring Initializer. So um, you could like choose web, you could go down and choose Jersey, which is Spring's, uh, excuse me, Sun's version of JAXRS. Um, you could go and choose Lombok. Lombok is a great um, uh, utility library that helps you get rid of a lot of boilerplate code like setters and getters, equals and hash code. Um, very, very, very good library. Highly recommend it. You've got your SQL libraries, JPA. So I'm sure Spring repositories in there. You got your NoSQL databases. Pretty much, uh, you know, you have uh, every uh, layer that would make up an application. You have different frameworks you can use with each layer. You got Hystrix for a circuit breaker. We'll choose that. A lot of options. So you choose what options you want to use in your project. You choose Generate Project. Uh, and that's after you fill in your POM information. And it gives you a zip file that ha that includes the project. And of course, you can just then use your POM to import the project into whatever ID uh, you're using. So this is one way to create it. In this video, we're going to go over doing it in IntelliJ. Uh, I, I like to use IntelliJ. It's one of my favorite uh, IDEs. So let's open that up real quick. All right, let's wait for it. Here we go. All right, so I'm going to choose File, New, and Project. If you scroll down the left side here, you should see Spring Initializer. I'm going to make sure the SDK is 1.8. It's going to it's going to use the Spring Initializer website. You can also point to custom ones. I'm going to choose Next. <clears throat> so I'm going to set up my POM to basically represent 
uh, little side project I've got going on at the house. Um, let's see here. I'm going to set the group to com family assist artifact. This is going to be the messaging service, press services. Now you could um, set the packaging to WAR, that way you can deploy it um, on an external Tomcat, or you can leave it external, or you can run Tomcat embedded, either way, or you can leave it as jar. I'm going to leave it as jar. Um, description, let's see, messaging service for family assist line of products. Okay, I've got all my POM information entered. I'm gonna click next. All right, here's the spring boot um, section, much less, much like the website I just showed you. Um, from core, I'm gonna choose security. Uh, we'll probably turn security off at first, but I know later on I wanna have security around the REST services. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and add that library. Gonna choose Lombok, gotta have Lombok. Great, great for getting rid of boilerplate code. Makes your code a lot cleaner, a lot easier uh, to read, understand. Um, let's see what else. Let's go to web. Choose web, and going to choose. I'm not using REST repositories. Uh, let's see, Jersey. There we go. Uh, Jersey JaxRS again. That's Sun's version of uh, JaxRS. The name is Jersey. I'm going to go down to, I could choose REST docs, but we're not going to use the spring REST docs. We're going to use Swagger. That'll be in the third video. Um, don't care for a circuit breaker at this point, although I definitely recommend that you use one. Um, History 2 is a great one. But let's see. Let's go to NoSQL. I'm going to choose to use an embedded Mongo database at the beginning. So. Later on, I'll move probably to an external Mongo database. All right. I think there's a couple more items I want to get. Let's go down to Ops, and let's use Actuator and Actuator Docs. The Actuator is used with the Spring Boot project to kind of manage uh, the service and get statistics and metrics. It actually has a health endpoint also to make sure your service is up and running uh, for monitoring systems and all that good stuff. So. All right, if you look on the right, you can see the libraries I've chosen, Security, Lombok, Web, Jersey, Embedded, Mongo, Actuator, and Actuator Docs. I'm going to click Next. And going to just pick a place where we want to put this at. OK, so I think I'm going to put it here in the Sandbox um, folder that I have. Um, messaging service is a good name for it. Uh, just you know, put it wherever you would like on your system. Uh, just a quick note um, on the previous screen on these libraries, I highly recommend that while you're doing the video, just include the libraries that I'm using. Um, once you get through the video and you see how everything is done and get an idea how it works, then you can go back and create another project with whatever um, libraries you'd like to add. And the reason I say that is occasionally you run across a particular library that has a little nuance that will you know, cause your project not to start up and all that good stuff. So there's actually um, a little nuance in this setup that I'll show you in the video. But I'd highly recommend, again, just start out with these items and feel free to, you know, after you go through the video and get used to Spring Boot, then go ahead and create a new project uh, to add what you need for your, for your given project. So let me go back to... This screen, choose finish. Got a little error there. Let me fix that. Okay, so back to this screen. I'm going to put it, the project in a directory called sandbox and going to put playground slash messaging service. Okay, next I'll click finish. Do I want to create that folder? Yes, I do. Yeah, let's open it up in this window. All right, so basically the wizard just created a new project for me. It's called message. It has a module called messaging service. Open it up. You can see the palm that 
the, the, uh, the prompt that it created for me. Um, here's all the information I entered uh, in the wizard. Uh, and here are all the libraries that I requested. So if you go to source, main, Java, and you'll sh you should see this messaging service application. This is your main Spring Boot class. This is the this is the entry point. This is the entry point of the executable. So you'll notice it just runs Spring application run and points right back to this class. Uh, it does that, and when it does that, it it, it runs it basically reads the annotations on this class and know what to do. This particular annotation, Spring Boot application, um, is actually a, a pretty complex one that. Or a very helpful one that wraps a bunch of other annotations up for you. So you get a lot of features uh, in one annotation versus having to put five or six annotations. So I highly recommend you study that annotation and what it does. Um, so at this point, um, before we close the video, we should be able to um, run Tomcat embedded. Um, and I installed the actuator service. We should be able to run the metric URL or help URL and make sure it's up and running. Uh, if, if that's successful, then we'll move on. Uh, and, and in the next video, we'll set up uh, uh, the REST endpoint and test it out. I think we're going to run across uh, a little nuance to see. Run the project. And FYI, when you, when you first run it, you might want to do it this way. Right click on here and choose run and that'll create your run configuration for you just in case your IE didn't create it for you in the first place. Well hey look at there that's great it actually you know started up Tomcat um, you can see it running on 8080 um, I, you know, I had a similar project uh, a few weeks back to where um, Tomcat actually didn't start up the first time around. Um, and what was happening was if you go into this POM, there, there was an entry for Spring Boot Startup Starter Tomcat. And inside of that POM entry, it had a little property that was called scope. And that scope had the value provided. So it was basically saying Tomcat would be provided. Um, it was already on your system, basically. Um, and I had to remove that scope provided uh, to get Tomcat to run embedded uh, and to that actually pull it to where the project would actually pull Tomcat down and run it embedded. So once I removed that scope um, mm -hmm. element that had provided, it actually started to run correctly like it's running now. So. I believe that was Spring Boot 1.52, and I think we're on Spring Boot 1.53 now. So it looks like they may have fixed that issue since then. So that's great. That's awesome. All right, so we have Tomcat up and running. You can see here there's a lot of little um, entry points there, little, uh, uh, little um, paths you can go to. This came with Actuator. So, for example, let's check out this Health path. So let me open the browser. Okay. Got it running on localhost 8080. Let's do health. There we go. Status is up and running. So I've got we've got Tomcat running embedded and it's got the actuator framework up. It gives you this health endpoint, returns the JSON status of up and running. So let's try a different one. Metric metrics. Up. Oh, now it's asking you for username and password. I believe there's a default, but you know what? Let's let's change it up a little bit first. So let's go ahead and change the security up just, just a little bit. So I want to stop the project. And if you go down to your resources, application properties, here's where you can actually configure uh, different properties that are used by those frameworks that Spring is automatically setting up for you. I'm going to add um, 
server dot port. Let's see, server port eighty eight management port. 9001. So this should run um, the actuator on port 9000 run 1 and it'll run the rest on 8080. And management address, we'll set it up to 127.0.0.1, basically localhost. Click save, and I'm going to change the security up a little bit. Let's go ahead and disable it for now. So I'm going to add two entries: management security enabled equals false. You know what? Let's change that to equals. There's a little mistake there. Okay. And let's set security basic enable false and uh, save it that should turn off the um, security so earlier I ran the application by pressing the play button if you don't have the class in your drop down and pressing play is an option um, if you right click on the main class and choose run It'll create that Spring Boot um, runtime configuration for you. When you created the project, it should have automatically put it there for you. Anyway. Let's run it again. All right, it's up and running. Tomcat started on 9001 and 8080. Let's go back to the previous browser that we had open. Let's change that to health, make sure that's still working. Oh, I forgot, I put the actuator on 9001. So, there we go, status is up. Here's the disk space, total, free, and threshold. So it starts giving you more statistics. Let's go to metrics before it requires a login. Hopefully it won't this time, there we go. Here's some metrics around my service. So these are all features of uh, the actuator framework. There's quite a few endpoints in there that can be used to manage your service. So we've basically created a project in IntelliJ. We created a Spring Boot project uh, that loads Tomcat embedded. And it also has Lombok uh, security framework, uh, the Mongo embedded database enabled, and um, Jersey um, set up. So our next video will cover actually using Jersey to set up REST endpoints. You just have to set up a Jersey resource config, add your endpoint, and you're good to go. And then the next video after that, we'll change that endpoint up and add some Swagger documentation and show you how to set up that. And that'll be the third and final video in this series. So hope you enjoyed it. Uh, feel free to leave comments. Um, your input's definitely appreciated. Thanks.